Hello and welcome to a new video on the Riemann Hypothesis and ELS. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. The first things first, I'd like to say thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. To join the Discord, please send me an email. And up next, I'm actually not sure just right now. Uh, it was supposed to be a Dirichlet divisor problem kind of video, but there was definitely some, uh, you know, some, some stuff going on there. So, all right. Uh, the book that we are going to be uh, referencing is Riemann Zeta Function by H.M. Edwards. So the citation is right here. It's very, very nice. And in the book, um, it talks about techniques for locating roots on the line, the Riemann Siegel Theta Function, and it defines uh, this you know, you know, general form right here. You have the uh, functional equation of the Riemann Zeta Function at one half plus it equals all this, you know, Zeta of S. And what we're going to do is we're going to first go over the definitions. So I is the imaginary equals square root negative one. And this uh, Euler's uh, function right here is very close to the uh, gamma function. In fact, it's just one over. Um, usually there's a, a minus one or something like that. But here we use uh, notation that's consistent with this book. Okay. And zeta of s, of course, is the zeta function. So <clears throat> what's the whole idea? The whole idea is that we can more or less factor this side. We can bring it up um, and we get e to the i theta t and we have zeta one half plus i t on the right. Now, what we're going to do is think about this conceptually. Uh, we have, say for example, this was real and this is always complex, like the zeros of the Riemann zeta function on the, the non-trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function are always complex. So you multiply them out, a real times a complex equals complex. However, if this is complex, this is complex, this will go uh, to the reals, and we can't really do that. We can't have that, so that's not a good deal. So we can investigate um, the Riemann hypothesis in terms of uh, this right here. So what is this uh, the Riemann Siegel theta function? You have theta t uh, equals imaginary log, all this kind of stuff. Um, and then minus t divided by 2 times log pi. Okay, so This is one definition. I think, uh, I think this is supposed to be interpreted as arg uh, in the book. So this is a book's definition. I've looked up other definitions too. So uh, we're going we're gonna to see how that plays out. Uh, next things next is the uh, ELS. Uh, this is uh, something that I've uh, you know, shown on my channel. Um, you can go back through my videos. I'll probably link it in the description below. This is the exponential Lambert series, and essentially what's going on is you have the regular Lambert series, but it's kicked up into an EGF. So a sub n and b sub m are arithmetic functions connected by the Mobius inversion formula, and that's a generalization of, or a specific, a specific instance of the Dirichlet convolution, and that's all very nice and complex. <laughs> but the whole idea is that we have a whole bunch of these identities that we can just plug and chug, and we're good. Right here is the, uh, the midtog leffler function. So uh, these two right here are just variant identities of the midtog leffler function. You can work between these two, which is really, really nice. Okay, so the insight uh, we talked about is e to the i theta t is always real. It, is, uh, it implies the hypothesis is true. Um, so a real times a complex equals complex. All right, so let's talk about the old way that we would approach this problem. You have e to the x, and you have all of this right here. So you plug in um, a sub n is uh, Euler's totion function, <clears throat> b sub m equals m, and that would all be uh, very nice and dandy. But the problem is, is that it's a sum series, and, and we really can't do much with the sum series. If we just put this theta, e to the theta, whatever, or this i theta in there, it might be quite cumbersome. So one of the things we can do is we can say, look, a sub n equals uh, Mobius uh, function of n and b sub m equals this epsilon of n and it gives us uh, this right here. So this statement equals x. Okay, uh, But we know that ln of e to the x equals x so all we have to do is raise both sides to the e and when you do this uh, <laughs> it gets pretty interesting. So when you raise a, um, a sum to the e, right, so e to the sum, whatever, uh, it becomes kind of a product, and you can go through and get all of these uh, terms like this, right? Now you might ask, uh, what's the C sub n? Uh, so the mid-tog left there function has a, uh, I guess, a pure generating function form. 
Uh, I won't go over it here, but this is just the result. If you'd like, uh, there's uh, two brilliancies, uh, Kabas and Sagio. Um, they uh, basically derived this idea that, uh, or well, I think they did, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure they did. Uh, that's what the citation says. Uh, um, that uh, E sub n, uh, comma n plus one, um, uh, basically x to the n, right, uh, can be decomposed into a generating function. You have these coefficients, and here are these product series, uh, these finite product series that uh, es essentially are the uh, coefficients. Which is really, really nice. So uh, C sub 0 equals 1, C sub D is, in this case, this particular case, uh, it's right here. Now, notice this instantaneously. There are no complex components. Absolutely none. These are, this is like gamma and this is a J, not an I, J, N plus 1, you know, there's no, no complex notion whatsoever. Okay, so citation is Kabas and Sagio. Brilliancy is right there. <clears throat> okay, and we said, yeah, E sub N is the Mintog electric. So as you can see, these are all real, right? And uh, we have x to the d uh, n plus one. Where does the d come from? Well, if you have x to the n here, you're gonna plug it in here and it's gonna basically just come in. <clears throat> all right, very, very nice. Uh, so you have the n plus one comes from this guy. <clears throat> all right, once you have this uh, e to the uh, x, you can instantaneously plug in an i x, right? Uh, this is the best part, that you, we now have a product series representation for cos x plus i sine x. All right, and the idea is that we're going to plug in our riemann siegel theta function in right here, and we're going to look at it in a very, very uh, deep way. So let me flip the board, and uh, we'll get right to it. All right, here we go. We have e to the i uh, theta t, and we have all of this right here, here's our <clears throat> product representation. It's very, very nice. And for all, uh, you know, t, e to the i theta t is real. It's very, very cool. All right, so let's uh, first identify uh, the main component here. Uh, e to the whatever, if this is real, then all of this is real. So let's just first identify uh, this part right here, okay? So we have uh, c sub n, and we have all, you know, all this, the d, times n plus one, Mobius n, okay? Uh, two things, um, one, the Mobius function is always real, right? Here's the definition of the Mobius function, not too pertinent to go deep into, but I've written it out anyways. It's one, negative one, or zero. Um, no matter what, <laughs> you're good, so you can take it out. The cn, uh, we talk about the coefficients of the mid tog leffler function being always real, finite products, so real numbers, you're good. So all you really have is this i theta t d times n plus one. Okay, so we're gonna go over here. Uh, this is just a restatement of what I just said. So we just need to show more or less that this is, uh, you know, good. Now, theta t, or the, the riemann siegel theta function, is uh, defined by this right here, and there are no, uh, you know, imaginary parts to the whole thing. Uh, so more or less, what we really just need to look at is uh, this i, whatever, right? i to the d uh, n plus one. And, you know, Mobius n is always real, so we don't really, you know, look at that. All right, uh, so the idea is that this is always real um, because essentially d starts at zero. So if you have i to the zero, it's, you know, one, and the zero is one, right? Um, and you have all of this stuff, right? Um, n equals one, two, three, whatever. But notice that uh, basically n, it's n plus one, so it, it will always start at two. So the, this, this right here will be either zero, or two, or greater. So if you have you know, i to anything power, higher than uh, two or itself, whatever, or, or two greater, um, then it becomes real. So. <laughs> This is very really nice. Since uh, i to the alpha is real for alpha equals zero or alpha uh, equals greater than two, greater than or equal to. So yes, uh, this in fact is always real. Okay. So that's the whole idea. Um, more or less, uh, I kind of put this together in the last like three or four days or so. I'm not sure if it's 100% airtight, 
Uh, maybe people in the comment can, uh, you know, find uh, an error or two. Um, but it is a very, very interesting idea that we can basically use the ELS to kind of uh, target this um, term right here, this I theta T, and get these, uh, these terms right here to maybe just go away. Um, so this is a very, very cool idea. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Uh, like, share, and subscribe.